I like visitors as much as the next hobbit. But I do like to know them before they come. Visiting. Mr. Baggins? At your service. Hmm? So, this is the hobbit. You asked me to find the 14th member of this company, and I have chosen Mr. Baggins. Me? No. We will seize this chance to take back Erebor. Yeah. Here, Mr. Bilbo, where are you off to? I'm going on an adventure. I think I read somewhere that Tolkien wrote The Hobbit as a children's book for his own children who were young at the time. And so it, it has a, a slightly naive but very um, whimsical and, and um, humorous kind of tone. His swords were made for... I wouldn't bother, laddie. Swords are named for the great deeds they do in war. What are you saying? My sword hasn't seen battle? I'm not actually sure it is a sword. More of a letter opener, really. I didn't want to make a children's film, um, per se, uh, but at the same time I wanted to, the, to have it more comedic than The Lord of the Rings and, and, and be able to sort of capture something of the flavour, but also feel like we had a, a foot in The Lord of the Rings door as well, so the same filmmakers are making another Middle-earth story in much the same style. So it's the characters within the story that give it its humour, rather than me making a film for children. If this is some clotheads idea of a joke, <laughs> I can only say... It is in very poor taste. You know, if you were writing The Hobbit as an original screenplay, for instance, you, you wouldn't have 13 dwarves. You'd probably have three or four of them and um, call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time, I was worried about those 13 dwarves. I was worried about the size of the ensemble. Um, but you, you end up having to, to somehow make it work for you. You know, the, what, what you think is a disadvantage has to become an advantage. Ah! Rather than be thinking of it as, as, as the burden of having to tell a story with, you know, these 13 dwarf characters, we, we started to think, well, 13's not enough. I mean, the, what, the, what are these dwarves trying to do? They're trying to reclaim their homeland from a dragon. They really need an army. Was that a wolf? Are there, are there wolves out there? Wolves? No, that is not a wolf. It does provide a challenge. You know, all the dwarves had logistical problems with their prosthetics, so they had to have makeup on for two or three hours a day, and they had these heavy costumes, hot, fat suits, big boots. And, and we knew that once we started working with these dwarves, it, it, it was going to need to go very smoothly, otherwise we were going to be in trouble. So we were reluctant to make that our very first day of shooting. So we started shooting Riddles in the Dark at the very beginning, which was just the two characters. What is it, precious? What is it? My name is Bilbo Baggins. Bagginses. What is a Bagginses, precious? It is one of the most iconic sequences from the book, uh, if, if not the, the, the most famous chapter of all, really, Riddles in the Dark. And so I wanted it to be, you know, a memorable scene in the movie as it is in, in the book. Ah, I, I don't want any trouble, do you understand? Just show me the way to get out of here, and I'll be on my way. Oh, we nurse. We know safe paths for hobbits. Safe paths in the dark. Shut up! I didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. But I also like the idea that it allowed Andy and um, Martin just to sort of to, to help break us into the fact that we were now beginning another 18-month shoot um, of these three movies. And also allowed Martin time to find the character of Bilbo Baggins. I mean, you're literally, when you watch that scene, you're watching him figure out who, the, who this character he's playing is. Why don't we have a game of riddles? And if it loses, what then? If Baggins loses, we eat it whole. Fair enough. Well, I always tend to struggle to keep films short for some reason. I, um, <laughs> I have been guilty of making films over two and a half hours long. We, we, I mean, we did have a lot more material than just The Hobbit. We, we had um, a, a bunch of material that Tolkien had developed much later in his life. Oh. He was about 100 pages of material in the appendix of The Lord of the Rings, uh, the, the Return of the King in particular, the back, back of Return of the King, that, um, that, we, that relates to events around The Hobbit. So we were able to use a lot of that material and flesh it out. Incineration. Oh, I am not the flesh off your bones in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Nope. Look, I'm, I'm a kid who grew up loving Ray Harryhausen's movies, loving King Kong, and um, loving the escapism of, of fantasy cinema. 
and dreaming of doing uh, these sorts of films. And somehow I've ended up with this enormous toy box. I've got this playground that I can just dip into. Um, I, I'm very, very lucky. And plus, I'm glad I'm making films now and not 40 or 50 years ago. I'm glad I didn't have to have the limitations that Ray Harryhausen or Willis O'Brien had in their movies. I, I'm so glad that just about anything you can come up with in your head, you can put on screen now. There's, there's no limitations anymore. So it's a, it's a really exciting time to be a filmmaker, a terrific time.